I am calling the Plymouth State University in New Hampshire. Uh, yes, this call is being recorded. Yep. Um, I was looking to talk to somebody about a press release that is making its way around. Is there a PR officer available? Hello, Captain who? Lefave. Hi, my name is Ademo, and I'm with uh, CopLock.org, and uh, I'm, call I'm calling to uh, ask you about a press release, but is this call still being recorded? It is not. Oh, well, I'm going to audio record it for my records, just in case. But are you aware of a press release that was sent out by a Bradley Jardis this morning? Sure, if you're uh, recording this conversation, I'm not going to speak with you about that. Well... You don't have any comment. Are you aware of the press release that I'm talking about? This episode of Cop Block is brought to you by Freekeen.com. We'd like to invite you to visit Freekeen.com. Hey guys, it's Damo. I'm here in New Hampshire with Brad Jardis, and he's going to tell us a little bit about himself first, and then about some activism he's got planned later this week. So tell the guys a little bit about yourself. Well, um, my name is Brad Jardis, and I, I've been a resident of New Hampshire my entire life. I was a police officer here in the state for 11 years. Um, once the Free State Project uh, started to take shape and hold, um, I started getting involved in liberty activism, and um, I left law enforcement, not because I don't believe in it, but it's, I just don't believe in victimless law enforcement. So I've been putting my efforts towards uh, trying freedom in the state and working with great activists like Ademo. And you got something special coming up this Friday, and uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, this Friday, I'm going to be uh, doing an informational outreach with a friend of mine, Tommy Mazingo. Um, we're going to be going to the Plymouth State University, and we're going to be ha um, handing out information to students, and we're going to be carrying firearms. And the reason why we're doing this is for a long time, the state of New Hampshire, uh, specifically the university system, has been lying to, uh, to students and visitors of campuses by enacting regulations that they have no authority to enforce. If you read the New Hampshire law, specifically 159.26, it's what's called the Firearms and Knife uh, Preemption Law. And what the law does is it says that no political subdivision of the state of New Hampshire has the authority to regulate firearms or knives. And the university system of New Hampshire is a political subdivision. So for those who might not know, just give the layman's term of a political subdivision. Sure. A, a political subdivision is something like uh, a school district, a town, a city. Um, it's essentially, um, like the name in, uh, implies, uh, it, um, it is a subdivision of the state of New Hampshire. None of these schools, because they are part of the university system of New Hampshire, have the authority to tell students or visitors that they cannot arm themselves with knives or firearms for self-defense if they so choose. They've been breaking the law for years by having these regulations, and by doing so, they're telling uh, young adults that they have no right to possess a gun or a knife to defend themselves if they're violently attacked. You know, it's understandable that some people may have differing opinions on whether or not it's suitable in an educational setting to have a firearm. That's okay. I mean, people can disagree about that. You know, this is, this is all about empowering people to be able to protect their own safety. So, but ultimately, wouldn't you th say the goal is to have people open carrying in, these, in the schools? Sure, yeah. In my experience as a police officer, if, if, if all the good people of the world were to carry firearms, all the bad people would be out of business overnight. Because I tell you right now, although I'm not a police officer anymore, if I was carrying a firearm walking down the street and I saw someone getting violently attacked, you better believe that I would do something about it quickly. And, you know, I mean, what we're encouraging is responsible firearm ownership, responsible firearm safety practices, and that's why we want to offer a free class to people so we can train them uh, in responsible firearm ownership and ultimately to make the community safer. Take us to that day, if, if today were Friday or in your mind, what do you hope to happen? You show up at 9 a.m., firearms and, and almost as dangerous materials in hand. Right, right. Um, wh what we hope happens is that they don't do anything. We hope that they respect the state law, and we hope that ultimately the word gets out uh, to students so they realize that they have the right under state law to uh, possess a firearm or a knife uh, to defend themselves if they're attacked. Because this is public property subsidized by taxpayers. I would never in my, in my, ever consider going to Dartmouth or to some private college and infringing on their property rights. But this is property that belongs to the people because it is a political subdivision of the state 
and accordingly, um, the, the university system is, uh, is basically contemptuous towards the New Hampshire General Court, who has said you cannot enact any firearm regulations unless we say so. And they have never said so anywhere. This is great. Well, from Brad, uh, cop turned activist and uh, now pushing back a little bit. Uh, again, hopefully uh, <laughs> things go well and we'll be there. So stay tuned.